is T O R. Don't know what that means. Hello. I did. I told you I was going live. You, you don't. You don't listen. So. Hey, what's up, y'all? Um, well, let me just get right to it and uh, share some more thoughts about this whole um, homosexuality in the church. Um, don't really want this to be all about Jay Gibbons. I've already said what I needed to say about that. But since it's still an ongoing issue and since it's still has the body of Christ divided, which is unfortunate that we as Christians who are supposed to know the word of God can't even agree on what sin is anymore. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a sad commentary, a very sad state of affairs that we as Christians, um, professing Christians today, can't even agree to what clear sin is and how clear, unrepentant sin is to be addressed. That's what we are today. If you don't believe that's what we are today, then you have not been reading and following your Facebook posts. You have not been uh, reading and uh, following comments on other pages on Facebook. Um, and you may not just may not even be interested in it, but I I, I would encourage you. Um, that this is something that we need to give our attention to because it seems to me that this sin, and I call it a sin because God calls it sin. Anytime a man has sex with another man or a woman has sex with another woman the same way they would if it was a male and female heterosexual relationship, heterosexual sexual relationship, God calls it an abomination. I mean, that is clear. I, I shouldn't have to give verses for it, um, but maybe I, maybe I should because people don't believe the Bible anymore. Um, and it, it, it seems to me uh, we, we don't Bible. <laughs> But Leviticus 20.13 clearly teaches that. 1 Corinthians 6 teaches that. Um, it's an abomination. Leviticus 20 verse 13, the Bible clearly says, If a man also lie with man as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Of course, God is, is, is talking to the people of Israel, but we see this same sin carried over into the New Testament. I just mentioned to you 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And so I'm going to read these texts to you. And that way you can have it in your mental note and file. And you will also be able to share with other people who think that you're giving your opinion and you're not giving your opinion. You're giving God's clear expressed word. Because that's all we really are to give. Hey, what's going on, LaRue? Um, that's all we really are to give, and that's all we should give. Your opinion, my opinion, and what sin is or is not, is not the issue. Who cares what you think sin is? Who cares what I think sin is? What we should care about is what does God say sin is and what sin is not. So, in 1 Corinthians, he's writing to the New Testament church. He says, oh, do you not know? that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. What does that mean? God, God says, if you are unrighteous, if you are not in right relationship with me, if you are committing deeds of wickedness or of unrighteousness, you and I will not go to heaven. Everybody wants to talk about going to heaven, but some of us are living like hell on earth. But we think heaven is our home. You are deceived. You are gravely and sorely deceived. If you think that you and I can live any kind of way we want and yet profess to be a Christian, 
yet profess to live eternally with God in his heaven and be before his face and before his presence, you have been duped. You have been deceived by the evil one himself, Satan. It's just as simple as that. Um, but Paul says, well, do you not know? And the implication is you should know this. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. I mean, how many times does Paul have to say this? How many times do we have to say this? Some of you are being deceived thinking what sin is and what sin is not. And we're saying this, that, that homosexuality is not a sin. We're telling people that they're born this way. We're telling people that, you know, God made homosexuals. God didn't make homosexuals. God didn't make sin because he's holy. It says, do not be deceived, neither fornicators. That's people who have sex outside of marriage as a pattern and habit of life, nor idolaters, those who worship anything other than God nor adulterers, those who have sex outside of the marriage covenant as a pattern of life, nor effeminate. Well, let's dig into this word for a second. You know what an effeminate person is? This is the person who acts like the opposite sex that they are. In other words, this is the person who acts like a woman or acts feminine, although he's a man. Okay? Uh, it's, it's the word that's used for soft. Malakoi. This is the person that basically, they appear to be like a man, but their mannerisms, their, their persona, how they carry themselves, how they conduct themselves, their conversation is feminine. And you've seen some of them like that. They smack their mouth when they talk. You know, I don't even want to. I don't even want to mimic it because I don't want anybody to get it get it twisted with me. But you've seen the mannerism. You've seen and see how they talk and how they carry themselves. Okay. And this is also the person who's the recipient of the homosexual act. This is the passive person. This is the receiver. We already know what a homosexual is. This is the person who was actively engaging in male on male sex. And this includes lesbianism, uh, lesbianism too. Okay, ladies, you're not you're not out of the woods on this one. You're right there. Okay. Um, it says no thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, no swindlers. A covetous person basically wants what doesn't belong to them. Drunkards, we know that person is. This person uh, is out of their mental faculties. They use alcohol and they're not able to reason and to ration as they would if they were sober. And they do this as a pattern of life. And notice, notice I'm using the terms patterns of life because we can commit any of these sins. But once these sins become habitual and habit forming and a pattern and manner of life. This is what God's word says here. He says, the unrighteous won't inherit the kingdom of, of God. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it. Don't be deceived. Don't think you're going to heaven when you are living this way and professing to be a Christian. You're not. He says, no revilers. Those are the people who falsely accuse. These are the people who are uh, the gossips, the, the malicious people, swindlers, those are those who take advantage of people because they can or think that they can. He says, if this is your pattern of life, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And notice what he says in verse 11. Such were some of you. Past tense. This is what you used to do. This is who you used to be. This is what you once lived. He says, but you were washed. But you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. So there's no such thing as a saved homosexual. It's like there's no such thing as a saved liar. I want you to see what the enemy is doing in the church today. The enemy is trying to make us accept homosexuality, but we wouldn't accept a liar. We, we wouldn't accept a pedophile. We wouldn't accept uh, an abuser. We wouldn't accept a zoophile. We wouldn't accept these things 
But Satan is doing a number and playing a trick on a lot of people, a lot of quote unquote well-meaning people in the church to have them think that homosexuality is an acceptable sin because the world accepts it. Of course, the world accepts it because Satan is the God of this world. And his children live in this world. But those who are children of God, although we are in this world, we're not to be of this world. So we should have a different view. We should have a different mindset. We should have a different conversation. Our, our conclusion regarding sin should be what the Bible's conclusion regarding sin is. And the moment that we deviate from Scripture, you are no longer speaking on behalf of God. So let me let me say this as well. Um, it is possible. It is possible based on Scripture um, that people can be around a person and not really know that person. And what do I mean by that? A person can can profess to be a Christian, but live like the devil and they can be under your own roof. And you know what? How do we know this is true? And if you don't think it's true, then read the Gospels. Remember Judas? Remember Judas was one of the 12? Judas was handpicked by Christ Jesus himself. Judas was able to perform the same miracles, was empowered by Christ himself to do works of miracles. And he was a part of the 12. And we remember in Matthew's gospel, remember in John's gospel, Jesus says, one of you are the devil. He says, did I not choose you in John 670? And yet one of you are the devil. And notice Jesus said, I chose you. And so Jesus knew who the deceiver was. Jesus knew who the traitor was. Jesus knew who the person that would betray him was. But yet he allowed Judas to be in his inner circle. I mean, when I say inner circle, I'm talking about the 12. Because Jesus had another inner circle of just three, Peter, James, and John. But out of the multitudes and out of the, the, the mass of people that followed Jesus, he picked 12 men. To be, in his, to be his disciples. In Matthew 10, Jesus' name is mentioned. But yet, he's called the son of perdition in John 17, verse 12. He's called the son of perdition, son of destruction. Why am I saying this? Because it is possible for a person to do, quote unquote, great things for God and be used to do things for the kingdom of God and yet still go to hell. Well, it's like I need book, chapter, and verse on that. You always talk about book, chapter, and verse. I need book, chapter, and verse. No problem. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. He says clearly in that text, not many who say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out devils or demons and in your name perform many works or miracles? And Jesus says, and I, I will tell them plainly, depart from me. I never knew you. You who practice lawlessness. Jesus never discounted or discredited the works or the miracles that these people who cried out, Lord, Lord, did. He never said the miracles were fake. He never said the works that they did was fake. He never said the preaching was bogus. He never said any of that. But what he disregarded, what he dismissed was their lifestyle. Well, let's bring it home to us today in our 21st century context. Many people will, will, will rap, sing, preach, evangelize, do all these things for the kingdom and yet be taken and be thrown out of the kingdom or not be a part of the kingdom. Because Jesus says plainly, depart from me, I never knew you. And notice what he says. He didn't say you who did a wrong thing. He says, you who practice lawlessness, you are good at doing evil. 
you make it your habit to live evil and to do evil, to live unrighteously. I call this video Cowards and Cover-Ups in Christian Hip Hop because where are all, of, all the people in Christian quote-unquote hip hop today speaking out on this sin of homosexuality that we notice that we have now been made aware of by an artist by the name of Jay Gibbons. Now, if, if you need some background and history behind uh, that situation, just go to the video that I mentioned about what does the Bible say about homosexuality? Or how, or how should Christians respond rather to homosexuality? And I address the situation there. But I want to talk about the cowardice. I want to talk about those who who profess to be saved, but yet act like cowards. And I want to read. I want to read from um, GotQuestions.org on uh, on what a coward is, because I, I just want to get other people's you know views on a biblical subject. Because sometimes y'all don't believe what I say. Y'all think I'm lying. So let me just read to you um, what GotQuestions.org says. Quote. In the Greek, the word translated cowardly in Revelation 21.8 implies fearfulness and timidity. The dictionary also defines coward as someone who lacks the courage to do difficult, dangerous, or unpleasant things. A coward consciously shies away from unpleasant situations, doing whatever he can to save his own skin, enslaving himself to fear. Cowardice is sometimes linked to a guilty conscience. Proverbs 28 1 says the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Scripture has much to say about being a slave to fear and contains stories of some godly people who gave in to fear. The Bible also talks about the fear of man brings a snare. I believe in Proverbs 29, 25. The, the fear of man brings a snare, but he who trusts in the Lord will be kept safe. A lot of people that I'm realizing in this current situation regarding the homosexual uh, admission of uh, Jay Gibbons, I'm seeing the I'm seeing the body of Christ. I'm seeing people in, that represent that claim to be Christians in the church in the body of Christ have different views on how we are to deal with unrepentant known sin. This is not a sin that was uh, discovered in somebody's uh, uh, private conversation. No, 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 no. This man came out and openly confessed and admitted publicly. That he is a homosexual. And how has the church responded? Well, some have responded righteously. Some have responded unrighteously. Some have responded righteously with godly indignation and godly anger. Some have responded unrighteously by covering up this known sin. Well, what do you mean? I mean... Uh, covering it up, not addressing it, or cloaking it under the guise of love. Well, you, you think I'm making this up? Well, let me read to you. Let me read to you a quote by DJ Wado. Okay. Read this quote to you, and that way you'll see what I'm saying, that I'm not making this stuff up. Um, these people knowingly knew about this man's sin, and yet... How did they respond? Brother, we love you. They still call him a brother. They still, they, and they don't use it in a generic sense, like, uh, you know, brother man or, you know, uh, 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 in a generic sense, it's just basically, you know, um, my brother. Okay? No, no, no. They use it as a redemptive term, as if this person is still a Christian. Okay? Um, so I want to read this. I'm going to read the first statement that, that, that Wado made, and then I'm going to read a follow-up statement that he supposedly made um, and, and try to, I guess you can say, uh, clean up what he said. But it seems like he just made the term or made his statements even more murkier and, 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 and clearer than mud. So uh, here it is here. Just give me a second to scroll it down here. Because uh, mm -hmm, I had it on my phone and I'm just putting it up on my screen here. 
<sighs> All right, I think I have it. I think this is it. Is this it? Yeah. Hold on. I try to have it set up here, but I, uh, now I'm missing it. Where? Where did I go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Let me see if I got it here. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Uh, no, that's this early one. Let me get the early. Let me get the first one that you got. The first one. The first one, not that one, this one. <sighs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ooh, I hate this. And while I'm looking for this, um, let me say this too. What I'm doing, some may, don't, some may not agree with this, and that's fine because it seems to be, you know, um, the norm for some folk, uh, that it's not loving. Um, and I'm not not mocking or knocking this person, but um, when people apologize for calling out a person in sin, that concerns me. Because if you're calling out what a person is doing, and you're calling out what they're doing and it was sin, and they have yet to repent from it, or they have yet to clarify or apologize about what they said, then you're basically caving, caving into fear of man. If if I I, I just use I just use uh, somebody here. I use Sam. If Sam did something publicly and I called him out on it publicly, as I'm supposed to once once sin is known publicly, to show that brother, this is sin, brother. You need to repent. And yet you don't repent. Or, or you try to explain why you sinned or why you caused confusion. And then I, I turn around and say, well, I apologize for, you know, for misrepresenting you. Um, where is the misrepresentation if what you said is what you said? I, I hope I'm making sense because we got people apologizing for confronting people that have either caused confusion in the body of Christ for this, or are the main culprits of confusion. So in this, in this, uh, in this tweet from, from DJ Wado, and, and basically what he said, as I'm still trying to find it, uh, basically what he said to Jay Gibbons was embrace your journey. Embrace your journey. Now, I already discussed this in the other in the in the earlier video. And uh there was no biblical justification for it. You said you're not making sense, you're being judgmental. Let me add you in here, Phil Jocelyn. Where are you? You wanna come in? You wanna come in, in the conversation? See, these are these are the people I wanna I wanna engage. Let's have a conversation, Phil. You wanna you wanna join a discussion? That way you can tell me how I'm being judgmental, but yet at the same time you're being a hypocrite for, for judging me. For claiming I'm being judgmental when the Bible tells me I'm to make a righteous judgment when it comes to clear sin issues. Would you care to have a conversation, Phil? So that way you can be heard. I don't want to misrepresent you and, and judge you. Okay, so let's, 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 let's have the conversation. Are you a Christian, Phil? Are you a Christian? The simple yes or no. Are you a Christian, Phil? Bring Phil in. Okay, let's see. I'm waiting for Phil and Jocelyn to come into the discussion. You're declining it. No, it's righteous. Your righteousness is a swifty rags. Am I right? Operating in my own righteousness. So, but I'm trying to add you into the into the video. So let's try it again.
saying let's go, then just all you have to do is accept the video request. Okay, you're declining it. So I'm just gonna ignore you then because you're not making you're not you're not willing to have a discussion. So I'm just gonna ignore your comments. All right, so anyway, let's see if I can find because I've already wasted enough time with this person. Uh let's see. No, no, we don't need to talk from here. No, no, no we don't need to talk from here. It, does your phone work? I, I, I would I would assume your phone work if you want to have a discussion. You, you, are you indecent or something? You can't have a video conversation. That way we can be we can have a verbal conversation. Probably not. All right. So uh, let me read. Let me just read this uh, the latest comment from uh, from Wado. Uh, DJ Wado from the Wado Radio Show. Because he's he said that he was uh being misrepresented in his uh in his comment. So this is what he said uh later. He says, uh Jay and I, which is which he's talking about Jay Gibbons, Jay and I are friends, bro. Like we talk on the phone. Yeah, and this is this is in the I guess I'm assuming in a public thread that he uh mentioned here. I'm assuming. Uh because it was shared publicly. Uh, he says, Jay and I are friends, bro, like we talk on the phone and have known each other for years. He knows I think his lifestyle is a sin. I told him as much. He says, that tweet you're criticizing me in the moment, he said, that tweet you're criticizing was me in the moment trying to encourage my friend, not embrace his lifestyle or sin. Well, when you tell a person to embrace their journey, the Bible doesn't tell us to encourage those that are embracing their journey in sin. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 14, to admonish the unruly, encourage the faint-hearted. Does a person who says to the church, F you, sound like they're faint-hearted? Does, does a person who says, I've been gay the whole time, sound like they're faint-hearted? Does, does a person who attacks the church now and then is blatant with their homosexuality and puts up LGBT flags on their profile page. Does that person sound or seem faint hearted to you? What is our response to those who are in rebellion against God's word? We don't encourage them. We are to reprove them. We are to rebuke them. We are to expose their sin when their sin has been paraded as being right. And that's what Jay Gibbons is doing. And some people, not all, some people, only a few people have spoken publicly against this. I'm looking for Rapzilla. I'm looking for CHH today. I'm looking for, uh, uh, who's the other one? Uh, and I've heard about them this morning. Uh, uh, they come on, I think they're out in Atlanta. Um, uh, uh, Sean Tanner. Uh, if you all remember the show, maybe you can, you can post it here. I'm looking for people like that. I'm looking for sketch the journalist. I'm looking for, you know, uh, Bizzle. I'm looking for uh, uh, um, who, who else is out there that's well known. I, I, and, and maybe I don't I don't haven't seen the comments because some of them have blocked me. But if they if they've spoken out publicly against this sin, I, I would like to recognize it. I would like to acknowledge it. Uh, yeah. Humble beast. Yeah, Jay Gibbons also used the F. Yeah, he did. He said F. He said F all y'all talking to the church. F all y'all. Um, I would encourage humble beast since they're claiming not to have known anything about this. They need to, they need to they need to make an official statement because automatically the assumption would be you did know about this, and if you didn't know about it, to clear your name for the integrity of God that you may want to offer and issue a public statement. Because again, only a few people have spoken out against this abominable thing. Now, some of you want to say, well, we all sin. Well, you know, you have sin. We all have sin. I'm not even going to entertain that. And here's the reason why. Because nobody is trying to parade their sin and have people to accept it like homosexuals do. And that's going on in the church. 
No one is trying to make anybody accept lying. Nobody's trying to make anyone accept stealing. No one's trying to make anyone accept, you know, adultery or homo or not homosexuality. They definitely are doing homosexuality, trying to make people accept that. Uh, or adultery or uh, uh, fornication. Not really. But homosexuality is being lobbied for, even in the church. And the moment you speak out against it, you're the bad guy. The moment you speak out against it, you're the Pharisee. The moment you speak out against it, something is wrong with you. Nothing is wrong with me. Something is wrong with those who think that this is right. And it's not right. It's wrong. It's sin. It's abomination. You can't defend this. And to try to defend this, you're not on God's side. You're being used as a tool by Satan himself. So, it is a possibility for a person to live a life of deception right under our noses and we not know it because it happened with Jesus' disciples. When Jesus says to the disciples, one of you will betray me, they all, each one of them, not me, Lord, not me, Lord. And even Judas said it. Even Judas himself said it. And Jesus told him, you, you said it yourself. You have said it yourself. If they didn't know who the deceiver was, they didn't know who the betrayer was. They didn't know who the person who was called the devil was until after the fact. Because they were, quote unquote, doing life with the individual. And yet this person was the devil. So you can you can do great things for the kingdom of God and still go to hell. And still not be his elect. That's that should scare us. Because we think talent is to replace truth. We think because a person is skilled, that that means that they're saved. We think that a person, because they're anointed, that that means that they are from above. No, that's not always true. This is why Paul says, examine yourself to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourself to see if you are in the faith. Test yourselves. We're to examine our heart. We're to examine and make sure that we're not veering off the path. And that by God's grace, he keeps us. That's what we should be doing. But this man says here, Wado says, that that tweet that you're criticizing was me in the moment trying to encourage my friend, not embrace his lifestyle of sin. Well, why didn't you call his, his lifestyle sin publicly? Why didn't you publicly call this man to repent publicly? Because that's not what you said in your earlier tweet. You told this man to embrace his journey and that God loves him. How do you know God loves him? And, and I get sick and tired of hearing people say that. Because how do you know who God loves? I know who God loves because his word tells me who God loves. God loves those who obey his commandments. God loves those who are, who are his children. You know what he says in Psalm 5.5? 5? He hates all who do iniquity. All who do evil. Is homosexuality evil? Hmm. Let that sink in for a second. Because some of y'all are idolaters and you don't even know it. You, you are an idolater because you have the wrong view of God. You think you know more about God than God reveals himself to you as God. When God clearly says in his word, he hates all who do wickedly. He hates all workers of iniquity. He hates all who do evil. And if homosexuality is not an evil thing and an unnatural affection and an attack against the nuclear family whereby two men cannot make a baby, I don't care what the world is trying to present and trying to jam and sham and, and slam down our throat. No, no, no. Two men can't make a baby. Two women cannot make a baby. It is a biological impossibility. But yet, we have people in the church who minimize this abominable sin, who minimize this heretical teaching that says a person can be a Christian and still be gay or still be homosexual or still be a sodomite. No, you can't because scripture says you can't. 
Once we are saved, God has delivered us from Satan's domain, his kingdom and his power. It does not mean that we are not going to sin, but it should mean that we should fight and strive and struggle against sin. If Paul in Romans 7 can say the good that I want to do, that I wish to do, I don't do. But notice he wants to do right. He desires to do right. He wants to please God. He's not making excuses for his sin. He's just explaining why he still has this struggle with the sinful nature. And this is an apostle. This is a person that was hand that was handpicked by Christ himself. God the son chose him. And yet he is transparent and coming out and saying, I concur with the word of God. I concur with the law of God that it is holy, righteous and good. But yet I still have this problem. I still struggle with this flesh. Why? Because the flesh never got saved. Our spirit got saved. But this flesh, this unredeemed essence of us, this unredeemed humanity that we are still clothed in, although our spirit man is saved, although our souls have been redeemed, although our minds have been renewed, we still contend and wage war against this flesh. And Paul makes it clear. Paul did not make excuses for his sin. Paul did not justify his sin. Paul didn't want anyone to celebrate him in his sin. Paul didn't want anybody to encourage him to Embrace his journey. He says, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death that I'm walking around in, wanting to, to disrobe myself from, wanting to extricate myself from. But what do we have today? We have people today encouraging, making light of, and then attacking those who they should be standing with in this war against Satan's kingdom through this means called homosexuality. How, how do we do that? This is how far gone we have come. Where now those who are the truth tellers are the ones that's being attacked. But it shouldn't surprise us. Because Jesus said it was going to happen. He told you and I that this was going to happen. He told you and I that beware when all people speak well of you because they spoke well of the false prophets. But rejoice when people speak evil of you and malign you and say all kinds of things falsely against you. He says rejoice because that's what they did to the prophets before them. Amen, Kevin. Just like at funerals. Because we fear the opinions and outward expressions of man more than we do the omnipotent God of the universe. That's why we don't tell people the truth. That's why we don't want people to know who we stand with. Because we fear man. So when this man says, that tweet that you're criticizing was me in a moment trying to encourage my friend not embrace his lifestyle or sin, but just say, yo, we love you, man. Props for being props for even being honest with us. Wait, though. Jay Gibbons was not honest with us. <laughs> Jay Gibbons been living a lie. Did you not read the man's tweet? The man said he has been gay the whole time. So how is he being honest? See, this is the excuse making. He says, props for even being honest with us. It's your journey. You are owning it. I wasn't trying. Or I wasn't responding to try to impress the public. I was publicly telling my friend, I love you no matter what. Why did you publicly tell your friend to repent as a true ambassador of God, Wado? But yet you dudes want to come at white people for being Republicans. You dudes want to come at white people telling them they're guilty for having white privilege. You dudes want to come at white people with your SJW uh, uh, narratives and your SJW agenda causing confusion and foolishness in the church and wanting people to apologize for being white. 
It's okay for you to confront white people about that, but oh no, you don't want to confront a homosexual that came out and said, I'm a homosexual. No, no, no. You want to tell him you love him. When the last time you told a white person you love them, wait though? Hmm? I'll wait. Somebody play the Jeopardy music for me while I wait for an answer from DJ Wado. Who has no problem loving homosexuality? Yeah, I said it. You love the sin of homosexuality, although you may not be doing it, but you love the sin if you're not speaking out against it. See, I'm, I'm sick of the foolishness and I'm calling all y'all out. All of you cowards. And all of you cover-ups in CHH, I'm calling you out. Because I'm sick of your hypocrisy. I'm sick of your bias. I'm sick of your pro-black stance. And it's not Bible. I'm sick of you. You nauseate me. You make me sick. Because you're not causing unity in the body. You're causing disunity in the body when you do stuff like this. You didn't tell this man that he needed to repent. Why, why should we take your word for anything? Uh, he, he knows. Uh, you know, he, uh, he knows that I, well, how I feel about it. We don't know. All we know is this. You told him to embrace his journey and told us that we need, we need to leave him alone. Back off. That we're attacking him. Nobody's attacking him. And isn't that funny? And, and hilariously hypocritical of a lot of these people because they, are, they, are, they will attack people who don't think like them, misrepresent them, try to put guilt trips on people because they're white and say that they have white privilege, try to have people to repent for something that they did not do to them, nor probably their ancestors ever did to them. But yet, but yet, we have people who come out and boldly, brashly, dogmatically say, I'm a homosexual. And we're supposed to accept that. And you want me to believe you? You want us to believe you, Wado? Really? I don't believe you, bro. Because you're a coward. You're not bold. And you know I know you. We've had conversations. We've had conversations about Lecrae. We've had conversations about guys in CHH and you don't speak out against them because you are more concerned about followers than you are with being faithful to God's truth. You are a coward. Yeah, yeah, Jackie Hill Perry. That's another one. Being a heterosexual doesn't send you to heaven. Knowing Jesus does, or something to that effect. And don't you find it rather ironic that just at the, on the heels after this declaration of Jay Gimmons' homosexuality, these little vague statements come out? And so my question already was posed to Jackie Apera. Jackie, did you know about this? See, church, we should demand answers. Oh, yeah. See, if you're not willing to hold these people accountable... You're just as guilty as them. You're just as responsible and culpable as them. You need you you ought to ask these questions to these people. Were you aware that this person was practicing homosexuality and you didn't warn the church? You didn't sound the alarm? You didn't do what the scriptures say to do? That we are to point these things out to the brethren in 1 Timothy chapter 4. You didn't do that? Why? Why? Fear of man? Possibly? Maybe? Be honest with yourself. Fear of losing followers? Fear, fear of being blackballed? Fear of being called a hater, a Pharisee, and, and every other word that they want to use? Why didn't you? I hate to be some of y'all's neighbors. If there was a pedophile on the street living in my neighborhood... I would hate to be your neighbor and I have children playing in, in, in the front or playing around the neighborhood and there's a pedophile and you know that he's living on my block and you say nothing about it. 
Oh man, I wouldn't do that. That's different. Why is it different? Oh, it's it's, it's wrong for a pedophile to physically molest children, but it's not wrong for a spiritual pedophile to molest the children of God by playing with their minds and their souls. Hmm. I, I, I'm 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 dumbfounded by the duplicity of some of you people. Absolutely dumbfounded. Because you want people to tolerate something that God abominates. You want people to accept something that God abominates. He hates it. So, you know, this man here, coward. Coward. And some of you are telling me, oh, brother, he, 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 he clarified what he meant. No, he didn't. I, 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 does anybody have a public apology from Wade Up for what he said? When he told Jay Given to embrace his journey, all he's doing really is backpedaling. He has not come out and say, matter of fact, he's saying that people are falsely accusing him for saying what he didn't say. And he did say it. It's right here. He's encouraging this man. He has not publicly called this man to repent, but you have no problem calling white people to repent for something they haven't even done, for being what, white? <laughs> he says, I was, I was publicly telling my friend, I love you no matter what. Yeah, I don't agree with your lifestyle, but I love you, and more importantly, God loves you. Wait up, you can't say that. You don't know God loves him. How do you know that? So God just loves any and everybody, huh? Where's that in the Bible? I just told you in Psalm 5 5, he says he hates all those who do iniquity. Amen, Kevin. The tweets are the evidence. Hashtag facts. Exactly. The tweets are the evidence. And this is why I screenshot and screen save a lot of this stuff. Because people have a tendency of making things go Jimmy Hoffa, making things disappear. Oh, but when you tweet it, you capture that joker. They can't, they can't, they can't run from that. They can try to lie and wiggle their way out of it, but you got them on, on, on quotes. That's your tweet. That's your statement. You said that. And now those who have no problem and those who have no fear of being ostracized and being called a hater and all that kind of stuff, we're calling you on it. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, Eric. Embrace the journey. Yeah. Go ahead and embrace that journey. And you know what Jesus says? Broad is the way. Broad is the journey that leads to destruction. And many, many are they who find that road. Embrace the journey. Embrace your journey. Really? Really? Would you tell that to a pedophile? Would you tell it to a zoophile? Would you tell it to a, a spouse abuser? Would you tell that to a thief? Would you tell that to a murderer? Would you tell that to a racist? Oh, no, you, I know you wouldn't tell that to a racist, huh? Would you? Would you? Would you wait on? Of course you wouldn't. Of course you wouldn't. A person who's, who's, who's admitting that they are a racist, would you tell them to embrace their journey? Would you, would you affirm your love to them? Of course you wouldn't. Because you're not consistent. You're consistently inconsistent. But anyway, I'm done. It's getting dark. And um, I'm going to continue to speak out. I'm going to continue to speak out. I'm going to continue to sound the alarm. I'm going to continue to warn. And, and let me say this for those of you who uh, may not consider me as your friend anymore or may not want to do quote unquote ministry with me anymore or we may have once been cool but now we're, we're not talking anymore whatever the case might be you may you may want to look at who your real enemies are because I'm not your enemy you, you may want to look at who you are clicking up with you, you may want to look at who the enemy is really fighting against because he's not fighting in his own kingdom. 
He, he's not even thinking about his own kingdom in the sense of worrying about in-house fighting there. It's time out for the pettiness among a lot of us in the body of Christ over tertiary issues, over petty disagreements, over falling out, over things that, that make no sense and that have no value in God's kingdom. It's time for the remnant to come together. It's time for those of us who are standing on the same wall and picking off these targets that's attacking the body of Christ. Because what Satan is doing, he's doing a work on the church. And there's only a few people, a faithful few people that I know that are speaking out, standing out, stepping up, and they're staying on that wall. And they're willing to sound the alarm, knowing that sounding that alarm is going to be annoying to some. But they sound it because to not sound that alarm and to not warn the body of Christ makes them an accessory to a spiritual crime. And that's not warning the flock. So, I'm done. My challenge to all of you tonight or today or whenever you watch this video you need to call or reach out to Jackie Hill Perry. You need to reach out to propaganda. You need to reach out to these people and ask them. Or anybody that you listen to that you may even think were aware of this and ask them. Were you aware of this Jay Gibbons homosexual situation? What, what, what is your response to this? Have you given a statement as, a, as an artist, as a Christian rapper? You know we're watching. And if they haven't, you need to ask them, why aren't you? Because these same ones, like I said before, are quick to speak about Donald Trump, quick to call him names and quick to call him out and quick to question the integrity of other people who may have voted for this man or any other issue that has nothing to do with the kingdom of God, by the way. They're quick to talk about systemic racism, but they don't want to talk about sin and wretchedness in the church. You need to ask them, which is more important, souls or poles? Which one? You'd be amazed based on how they answer, if they answer at all, or how they apply the answer to their lives. You'd be amazed on what, whose kingdom and whose God they serve. So anyway, I'm done. You guys have a great evening. I love you all. Again. Call these people out. Heaven is not a place for cowards. Read Revelation 21.8. If you're a coward, you're not going to heaven. And if you're covering up sin, you will not prosper. And you're not loving someone by trying to encourage them in their rebellion, thinking that you're loving them out of their rebellion. No, you're not. Our parents used to whip our behinds when, they, when we refused to do what we were told to do. Did your, parents, did your parents encourage you when you told them, I ain't doing it? Oh, Ray Ray. Oh, son. Oh, Rinkisha. Oh, my lovely daughter. Please go to bed. No, no, not my parents. Told me to do something one time and I didn't do it. They laid the hammer to the wood. On my behind. And it was amazing how I was, I was automatically compliant. No, no, no. There's a time for encouragement. And then there's a time for exposure. And the latter is the time. 